episode of These Go to Eleven. Let's turn it up. Hey everybody, welcome back to These Go to Eleven, an unchurchy conversation about everyday faith. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast platform. This not only helps us to get our content out there, but also helps us to find out what you, our faithful listeners, think. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to These Go to Eleven. Once again, I'm Nathan Bell. Joining me as always, one Mr. Gregory Dutcher. If you don't sit down in that seat, I'm sending a note home to your parents. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Am I going to have to serve breakfast club style detention? (laughs) Or just regular good old-fashioned lunch detention? Because breakfast club style detention, dude. Now, maybe that was a thing, but did you see Breakfast Club? I did, yeah. Dude, wasn't that all day Saturday? Yeah, yeah. It was like... Stick at seven thirty in the morning right. till like four or something, <laughs> and the uh, the vice principal that kept adding days. I still think, um, who was that character? But the 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 grungy guy. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it, oh it, what's the actor's name? Is it Judd Nelson. Yes. Yep. It is uh, yep, Judd, Judd Nelson. Nelson. Yep. I think he's still serving detention, dude. <laughs> Based upon how many got piled on in that movie in nineteen eighty five. Right. Um, but I'm thinking Saturday detention. And that vice principal, who was a great villain in many things, mm-hmm. I think he passed away many years ago. I think now. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great, uh, great character. Um, yes, uh, I think you've, uh, I can tell school's on the brain, Nathan, because School you started. School is on the brain. I started back at uh, Towson this week, which is uh, exciting. I wish yeah. it was a little later. Yep. A little later, but this is the week Towson. Uh, Goes back. I wish it was post Labor Day. Yeah, but um, pretty cool. This um, this year it's a little different. Mm-hmm. I'm doing my public speaking, but one less because I'm doing a communication ethics class as well. Nice, different class. Nice. And in the spring, dude, I don't know if I've told you this even in private. In the spring, mm-hmm. I, it's all but certain they're letting me teach a special elective course, the rhetoric. Of Stephen King's short stories. Nice. Um, nice. And uh, I can't wait for that, dude. Dude, that'll be totally in your wheelhouse. That That's great. Is going, they're going to have to drag me off the campus because I'm not going <laughs> to want to stop that. It's going to be fun. I hope I'll have maybe one student sign up for it. Um, but you go back like... Got a intended. week from today. A week from today. Yeah. After Labor Day. After Labor Day, yeah. Of course, being an early Labor to this year, kind of, you know, that that's... That's, that's a little bummer. That's okay because I, so here's the thing. I private school, yep. we are we're not bound by, you know, the state laws and restrictions and all of those things. I actually would not mind if the school went back before Labor Day. Yeah. Simply because that means that we get out even earlier. Yes. yes. So this this is the way I always look at it is by the time we're getting into the school year, right? I mean, the summer, we we really have just as long in the summer in a, yep. as a private school, you know, that doesn't get cut short because yep. we're either ending earlier. Uh, or So if we start earlier, we end earlier. Yep. Sure. If we start later, we end later. Yep. There's no, you know, we're, we're going to get the same amount of time off in yep. the summertime. It's not like public school where you could literally end later and then start earlier. Right. Oh, um, yeah. Believe me, I know. Yeah. So I I would prefer to start earlier because by the time you're getting into that point in August, yeah. okay, we, we could go back to do teacher, you know, if, if we had done teacher prep week last week rather than this week, yeah. and then we started kids this week, and then we're done, you know, basically over that Memorial week. Yeah. I, I'm ready to be done after Memorial Day. Sure. Well, I wish, dude, how many times have I said it? I wish schools stuck to that. Yeah. I know there's 180 days. Uh, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in private schools, it only has to be 170. Right? Correct. Right. Yep. Um, where that magic number comes from. But I don't see why you cannot accomplish everything that needs to be accomplished the Tuesday after Labor Day. Yeah. And be done by, be done by Memorial Day. Yeah. 
that would be my in my perfect world. Yeah. If I were king for a day, yeah. I would decree. Well, and honestly, I wouldn't even be opposed to going to school that week of Memorial Week. Like uh-huh. you've got that Monday off, right? And then your last four days are the end of school parties, the exams, yeah, all of those that. things. Yeah, they, I could see that. I, sometimes Memorial Day, like this past year, I think was a little earlier. Yeah. Right. So sometimes it can be like the twenty. Third, twenty fourth, yeah, yeah, and you might say, "Well, we we could go to the twenty sixth, twenty seventh, yeah. get out a little bit later in, in May." Um, yeah, because you're right that that that's a fun school week. That to me yeah. is a rite of passage. For yeah, kids. you get your your movie day, yeah, your field day, yeah. and all the awards, and it's just kind of a nice little preview of summer. Um, so anyway, dude, you feel uh, set to go? You ready for another year? Uh, I'm as set as I can be. Um, so I, this is going to sound braggy, and I don't know how to say it any any say other it, way. Brother. You're um, safe. I I can do almost anything I'm asked to do in sc- in a school setting. Yeah. I am currently director of student life. Yep. I am our database manager. Yeah. I also teach. Yep. I help with the major events in the school, yep. um, planning and ideas. I, I get called on to do a lot of different yeah. things because I have a lot of, uh, I, I have a particular set of skills. A particular set of skills, um, yes. And so I am, I, I can I can do a lot. Yes. And I've been in settings that have allowed me to do yeah, a lot I of different say, things. and for a while now too, dude. So I am ready in the sense of I'm, I'm always ready for whatever get thro- gets thrown at me yeah. to just jump in and do it. Yeah. Um, in terms of being ready and comfortable every year to like, oh yeah, I, I know this curriculum. I know what I'm doing and all. I, I am never ready for that because I've never taught the same thing more than two years in right, a row. Right, right. Um, and, and, you know, any teacher will tell you your first year, you're just surviving and getting through. Like you're trying to work your way through what works, what doesn't, what is important, what isn't. And and if you're passionate about something, everything is important. Yeah. Um, and so you're trying to figure those things out. The second year, you start to refine. It's really not until your third year yeah. that you start to say, this is the base content of what I have. And then you make your refinements every year after that. But yeah. but you have your core, you have your base. Yeah. Um, I've never been in that position. Wow. I've never been in that position. Every single year that I have taught- You're doing something different. I'm doing something different, so- Yeah, I could see pros and cons with that, right? The pro yeah. is there's always something fresh. Yes. Exciting, but yeah, the con is, man, it is nice to have something like a comfortable old slipper. Yeah. Fits perfectly. You yeah. You step right into it and you move on. I'm at that point, dude, with public speaking at Towson. I've done it enough now that- Yep. I-, I it sounds the same thing. Like you, I could do it in my sleep. The core. My challenge now is how do I keep honestly myself more interested? Yeah. Because I will say, um, the final speeches, like this past May when we finished up at yep. Towson, dude, I listened to sixty speeches in three days. Many of those are. Yeah. Right. Well, here's the thing. You've got some students, and I, I know they're they're essentially telling me, "Yeah, I'm just because I I stress this is public speaking, not public reading. Right? Do right. not get up there and read. If you do, you'll notice it. You will not, you know, because the 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 first speech, I'm I grade much easier. Yeah. That final persuasive speech. I'm now at a point where I say. If I told you in your comments, in your grade, you know, there's a rubric and you, you, you're you commenting on various aspects of their speech. But if I tell you that this was basically a reading, not a speech, and I always say it nicely. I said, great material, great information. Yep. I want to hear you engage us with it. If you do the same thing on your final persuasive speech, you're going to be graded much lower. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, dude, I, did, I gave a lot of lower grades because... Yep. Some students, I think what they're telling is, yeah, I don't care. Right. Uh, yeah, I understand. They're, most of them are required to take this course. Yep. So some are phoning it in. But when you, when you have to hear five speeches in a row that are basically just six-minute readings. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, that's. It's tough. <laughs> that's rough, yeah. It's rough. You know, yeah. it's like, well, 
teachers should be paid more because blah, 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 and they're arguing. They're, yeah. they're not even arguing. And then it, it, I will say it makes the, the, the dynamic ones really pop. Right. Because, oh, the student's are really trying to engage us. Yes. Even if they're struggling. Yeah. You can tell. They're putting that effort into yep. to doing it. Yeah. So I grade the strugglers higher. Yeah. I do, oh, absolutely. I see them really trying to do it. Well, education at the end of the day is not about checking boxes. It's about improvement. Exactly. Right? I mean, and so if you have a student who comes in and, you know, they're, they're coming in at 100% yeah. on day one and they've never done anything to improve. Yeah. Well, they, they haven't learned anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's not because you haven't taught them anything. It's just because, well, I'm I'm doing what I need to do. And so this yeah. is all I need to give and, and all of that. And so coming in and realizing, okay, here are the things that the professor has told me to work on and yeah. here are the ways that I can improve this. Yeah. Well, that shows that there's effort and there's learning taking place. Oh, dude, absolutely. And I, I really have come to appreciate it. And I know you do too. If you're teaching it's mm-hmm. really what you want to see. Yeah. If you just see, just oh, what's the point? You know, just uh, it's it's the AI syndrome. Have it do everything right uh, for you. Uh, but I get a little taste of your life because I am teaching um, a communication ethics course, w- which I've mentioned, and that one I've never done. Uh, yeah, I've done an ethics course, but not communication ethics. So. I kind of had to get in touch with Towson's curriculum. Oh, I see what they're covering. You're yep. covering things like plagiarism. Yep. But there's some interesting topics too. You're 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 covering um, um, the fine line between persuasion and manipulation. Okay. Yeah. And it's funny how this isn't what the podcast is about to. But quick comment. Yeah. Hypersensitive feeling many people have today about what we might call religious speech. Religious speech, by definition, is always persuasive. Right. If it's a pastor like me giving a sermon, yep. if it's a rabbi, an imam, uh, you know, whomever is giving their sermon, you are persuading people yes. to believe differently, behave differently, um, differently, think differently, respond differently. Yep. So, um, you know, that that whole enterprise is in question today. Yes. Yeah. So what I always stress when I do persuasion in my speaking classes, and I get to do a deeper dive in the ethics classes, is what's a winsome way to do it? Because of course we persuade. Right. I said we do it all the time. When you watch a, when you binge a new show. Yes. Oh, dude, you got yeah, you got yeah. Squid Game because blah right. blah blah. It's persuasive speech. I I'm emphasizing. Um, we speak experi- experientially yep. and invitationally. Yes. I think in our culture, that's a wise way. Let me tell you what I've experienced. Yep. No, through that experience, we're giving truth claims. Uh, and let me invite you to consider. So anyway, I'm kind of, I won't get to that probably till late October, early November, but it's part of that's fun. Yeah. A new course. Yep. What am, how am I going to approach it? What, yep. what am I going to do? What exercises to kind of uh, reinforce it? So uh, I never realized that, dude. You have never gone like into year three with the same material. Correct. Wow. Yep. Wow. Where Joy, I imagine, she's been teaching humanities there for... Joy has been teaching ninth grade humanities. This is her 16th year. Wow. Teaching ninth grade. Now... Um, Eighth grade is something that she took later. Okay. But she's still been doing that for a number of years mm-hmm. as well. Um, and then... Uh, and wait, what is she teaching uh, in eighth grade? Uh, ge- humanities. Oh, geography okay. and English. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. So, no, but ninth grade, um, antiquity and English, yeah. she's been doing uh, her whole tenure there. Wow. And I believe I saw her do it her first year. You did. I did. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yep. Um, so yeah, you actually taught in the same room together, which yes. is what brought us to CFC. Wild, dude. Yeah. Wild. Um, well, Nathan, let me. Can I jump into the interviewer? Yeah. For a little while because normally nine times out of ten that's you, and occasionally I get to do it. Yeah. It'll still be a dialogue. Oh yeah, absolutely. Meaning I can't shut up. <laughs> um, but uh, last week I love the conversation we had. Oh, so good uh, about parenting. Yeah. It just it felt like we said when we were done, felt like an old throwback. Yes. Just kind of a super laid back. Yep. Um, and hopefully it was 
uh, let us know, listeners, if it was beneficial. Yes. We just wanted to have a pretty frank discussion about parenting. And I'd say the takeaway there was uh, if we remove this concept of a guarantee, if you do this, your kids will turn out like this. Right. It kind of is a game changer with, with um, in parenting. So that was last week's theme. Yeah. And, um, you know, so you largely asked me, but I want to ask you, Nathan, we talked about parenthood from the perspective of the parent last week. Yes. This week, we thought it would be interesting to talk about parenting from the perspective of a teacher yeah who also adopts a parenting role through the course of yeah. a day in yeah the care there's even the latin term for that uh to uh you know capture what a school what an educator does but it also gives teachers like yourself a unique perspective yeah that i don't know if parents always have now Historically, we said we had the PTA, right? Parent Teacher Association that brings them together, bridges the gap. Uh, that doesn't always happen, but I would be very curious to ask you a few questions today from your perspective of a teacher what you see, good and bad. Yeah. As long as no names get named. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, uh, but please tell me after the podcast. I want to know the names yeah. in detail so I can. That's right. So I can. So you can follow up later. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who should be judged. That's right. I am kidding, of course. Um, <laughs> sort of. But um, I thought it would be probably good to ask you there. So you've, you've given us a lot of the intro, Nathan, but just tell me how many years. You had a few gaps in there where you did some. Did, yeah. Things. How many years teaching do you have now? Actually, I have more than people realize yeah. because I started teaching when I was 15. Wow. Um, I was a young martial arts student. I started yeah. training martial arts when I was uh, three years old. My yeah. father uh, started some of my unofficial training um, for several years. He, he uh, had taken he had done wrestling and then he had done some martial arts and so he he was doing some things with me and showing me some things um that i could use and then when i was eight i officially started into a school and was working through the ranking system and all of that yeah by the time i was uh 14 i was helping out as an assistant instructor and by the time i was 15 I was a full-on instructor in classes, teaching students. Wow. Um, by the time I was 18, I was actually uh, running my own school. Yeah. for, And I did that for about a year. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that, I mean, a very up-close-and-personal kind of teaching. Yeah. Where yeah. literally hands-on yep. teaching, right? Yeah. So I got to ask, Nathan, were your shoulders tired from all that car waxing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, no, that, no. The car waxing was fine. It was painting the fence. It was painting the fence. Yeah, <laughs> my. Goodness. It was the up and down. <laughs> so I'm going to call you Nathan Son. That's right. Uh, for the rest of the podcast. So that's right. So that is your kind of hands on what I call experiential, hands on experiential. Yeah. Since you were doing at a young age, and what about in the classroom? Yeah. So in the classroom, I started back. Uh, I want to say 2008 was when I was when I started in a school setting. Yeah. Uh, 2008, I started in a school setting. Um, and I've since then, uh, probably for probably four years, have not been in a school setting doing other doing other jobs. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for like the most one part. One of those jobs, I believe, Nathan, was um, selling filthy, vile, satanic liquor. Yes. And uh, you were one of my customers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what you're talking about. That's right. You know? You're talking about my evil twin, Craig Butcher. Uh, that's right. Who, um, looks and sounds like me and might have the same social security. Selling you things yeah. like... Uh... What a great... <laughs> Dude, what a perfect hit back. Great moment. I got to celebrate it. Dude, uh, nobody will know this in the audience except maybe one person, but I'm going to do uh, the Scrubs line. Recognize! <laughs> I just got torched. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so is... I always remember that, dude, when you were at the uh, liquor store. Yep. Uh, and uh, gave some fine recommendations. My father was very appreciative of your recommendations. 
because uh, uh, often many of his Father's Day and birthday gifts were supplied. Yes. Um, by uh, the place of your employment. But no, I just love that, dude, that my Christian school teacher friend had a little gap year. Yeah. Or was it two years? How long were you? There? Uh, I was there three years. Three years. I was wow. there three years. Yep. A uh, little gap yeah. period uh, where where he was doing that. So yep. all that to say, dude, a yeah. ton of teaching experience. Yeah. Teaching experience, uh, experience over uh, different subject matters yep. as well. Um, I taught science. Uh, to both high school and middle school. Um, I taught uh, history. I've taught uh, public speaking. Uh, I've taught rhetoric, which yeah. is the ancient form of public yes, speaking. Right. Um, I've taught uh, government, economics, yeah. uh, theology, uh, apologetics, ethics. So I've yeah, all across the board um, in in my teaching career. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, physical education, obviously, um, with martial arts background. I've jumped into physical education on a handful of times. So, Well, with all that, dude, here's my first official question. Yeah. Give me, I'm going to start positively. Yeah. Give me the, maybe ideals too strong of a word, give me the, the, the picture of the effective beneficial to you beneficial to the student parent yes what does that parent look like how they act communicate etc i i think it looks um so i'm going to say the the term we use all the time is partnership yeah we are partnering with you in the teaching of your children yeah um i think the way that most effectively works and and this comes from my mother who, who started saying this to my sister's teachers. My sister's 11 years older than I am. My mother started saying this to my sister's teachers uh, years ago before I was even uh, born. Uh, during one particular parent-teacher conference, uh, the parent, uh, my mom went in and was talking with the teacher and you know they were getting to know one another and um, my mother just very blatantly said, I will make you a deal. Yeah. I will believe half of what my daughter says about you if yeah. you believe half of what she <laughs> says about me. And I think that is the right perspective. Wow. Because I don't think that students even always... Now, I think they they do deliberately deceive to not get in trouble and things sure. like that. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that's always the case. I think, I think a lot of times it's their perspective on things. Yeah. And, uh, I know we don't like to say this. I know this is politically incorrect, but yeah. their perspective can be wrong. Oh my goodness. No, right. A kid's perspective right. could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that may happen once in a blue moon, once in a blue yeah. moon. And so I have used that, uh, every year at my beginning of the year talks with my parents. Oh, I love that, dude. I don't think I've I'll, ever heard you say that. I'll that. believe half of what they say about you yeah. if you believe half of what they say about me. Yeah. Um, I think in that uh, proper communication, right, we, we talked about this um, last week. I think we'll continue to talk about it, our Peacemaker series that we did. Yeah. Um, if your child goes home in October and says, oh, mom, dad, I'm, I'm really having an issue with Mr. Bell. I don't think he likes me. I'm just, I'm struggling to connect with him, to relate to him. I just, I, I think he's intentionally out to get me. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until April yeah. to tell me that your child has an issue with me. Right, right. Um, I, I think that's important that, that first, a couple of things need to be established. I would actually argue that first and foremost, um, my feelings towards your child are not as deep and intensive as you think they right. are. Right. I am there to, to do a job. Right. I, I love working with, uh, teenagers. I love the, the expression that comes to them when when things start to click yeah. when that when they're they're starting to put those things together mm. i love seeing the discovery that that is there for them i take no delight 
in putting 60s on their paper or 50s on their paper. I take no delight in having to correct them 10 times a day in class because they're speaking out. Right. Um, I take no delight in, in quote unquote, embarrassing them in front of their friends because they just did something stupid. Mm-hmm. Those are not the reasons why I'm there. Those are not the reasons why I'm in teaching. Yeah. However, as a good teacher, they are a part of my job. Just like as a good parent, discipline is a part of your job. Mm -hmm. And so I think the first thing is coming to the understanding and realization that we are in this together. I am out. I am for your child. I'm not against your child. And regardless of what your child thinks, regardless of their perspective on the situation, I am always for your child. And it sounds to me, Nathan, like you've you've had enough experience with, with good parents that get that or at least yeah. are open to get oh, that. Oh, absolutely. And say, absolutely. I hear you and I'm, I'm there. Um, so can you give me a good example in that spirit of a parent who, who comes with a concern? What does that look like to you when it's done? in a healthy way. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, one of those things is, is first of all, um, can I, can I just put at the beginning an unhealthy way? Yeah. Do not have this conversation with me over email. Yes. Do not have this conversation with me over email. Use the email to set up an appointment. Yes. Mr. Bell. And, and please let's keep this professional. Um, I have parents who are like, oh, just call me by my first name. I'll call you by your first name. Something breaks down in there. In a perfect world, we could do that and the respect would still be maintained. But um, I have family members who are in my school who I actually teach their children. So I'm related to these children. Um, And anytime I communicate with them from the school, from my perspective of a teacher, I always call them uh, Mrs. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so, even though if we were meeting the very next day for a family gathering, I'd be calling them by their first name. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, So let's keep this professional because the moment we start to move away from that, Mm -hmm. it it begins to get murky. Yeah. Um, Things begin to to get awkward and weird. So, so professional Mr. Bell, um, I've noticed that my son, my daughter has been struggling, um, in your class for whatever reason, it could be grades, it could be behavior, whatever reason, you know, whatever the reason is, can we set up a time to get together and talk about this? That's good. That's it. That's great. Don't, don't try to tell me what's been going on in the family. Don't try to tell me what, what's been going on here and there and everywhere. Um, that's not the time and the place for it. Let's set up the meeting and let's sit down face to face and talk. Is that something you will tell parents? It, I, it sounds like you would, like in your kind of back to school night, hey, if you want to communicate, this is a helpful yes. way. You know, and then I'm sure there's exceptions. You've got a parent with... A prolonged illness. And oh, absolutely. Be, but you, yeah. of course, you're going to accommodate those exceptions. But dude, we've talked about that before. That's a life principle. Yes. Like use email to set up the meeting. Yes. Not to have the meeting. I'm yeah. hundred percent. Because tone. Yeah. And the other thing, dude, don't you find, I'm sure on the teaching side and the parenting side, it's just easier to be more brazen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hide behind, click, close the MacBook. Go do your thing. Or to put your emotional state into that email. Yeah, yeah. Um, so regardless of the tone of the email, you're putting your state of mind into the email, and so it could be completely misread in that yep. regard as well. I, do, can I commend you? I love that you, in a day and age where, it, yes, we love the convenience of, um, oh, the, 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 the quick expediency mm-hmm. of an email, but if you if it's a true concern yes. about your child yes. that I'm partnering with, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yes. And the ideal way is obviously face to face communication. I always say, dude, like face to face is best. Yeah. Phone calls 
not as good, but better than email. And then you get email and then maybe texting. And yeah. You should use the text to say, hey, I'm sending you an email this morning. Yes. The email, hey, Mr. Bow, I've got some concerns about, can we get together and talk about them? And then you you go from there. Yeah. So uh, now let's talk about, Nathan, because I'm interested in this, thinking of various p- teacher parent conferences I've had. Yeah. Um, they meet. Yep. What's a, a good posture, something you from a teacher's perspective would say, when I meet mom and dad or mom or yeah. dad and both, uh, this is this is what I appreciate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, first is, is you know, the greeting, um, being in a, in a private Christian school, prayer. Oh, regard- yeah. And, right. and nice I can tell you there. that um, – I have parents who come in who are not believers, but wow. starting that meeting in prayer, wow. um, because whether or not they believe in the power of yep. God, I do. Yes. And I know that, um, you know, God is a, a God of peace and restoration. And, and right now we are in conflict. And so um, being able to, to call on and draw on that power to, to me that's that's important like that's that's the posture and and let's say you can't do that publicly yeah if you're a believer you can do that privately of even course. if even if you're in a setting where that's not a thing that you could do publicly yeah. um so i think prayer is is huge to be able to to call on uh the lord to be able to help you through that situation right yeah. um I can be a very uh, blunt and sarcastic person. Right. I am very quick-witted. Uh. That has to stay in check when I'm meeting with people. Oh, yeah. I yeah. I would love to say that I am like, um, you remember that show House? Yeah. The Doctor? I would love to say that that's how I am 24-7 all the time yeah. because that's what people need. No, no, no. I can't be like that right. because I'm trying to resolve a conflict. House was trying to create them. Right, right. I'm trying yeah. to resolve conflict. I'm trying to to assist them in in for whatever reason, helping yeah. them to understand their child in this setting. That's good. That's good. Um, and so I have to be very careful of how I'm doing that. And so one of the first things is to Honestly and genuinely, I can say this about all of my students, that I'm delighted that this person is here. That's good. Because I know that God has them here for a specific reason. Yeah. Um, and so I can put that out there yeah. very honestly, yeah. that I am delighted that they're here and that I have an opportunity to, to partner with you and to teach your child. So when they start in on the concern, mm-hmm. when is it easier to listen? Because obviously, I'm trying. It's hard to talk about the positive without the negative. I want yeah, to yeah. The negative. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what um, what parents? What things have they done that you're like, boy? I, I really appreciate the manner uh, that they're bringing this. I'm, I'm curious. I think what, what stands out. I think first of all, not not excusing the behavior ah. whether it's in regard to the homework or or attitude whatever it might yep. be not making excuses for yeah, it yeah yeah we know that this is this is a problem and we know that this has to be addressed yeah. and we are we are here to to talk with you about what we can do to find out is this a problem that is is being is on the school side or is this a problem that is on the home side right. and and having that humility to understand that there are issues that even though they pertain to school they're actually home issues homework yeah your child not doing homework right. is not a school issue right right that's a home issue that's a great point i think it's called homework right right um and regardless of your thoughts and views on homework because they are all over the place. Sure. The reality of it is your child does have homework. Right. And it does need to be turned in. Right. Um, and so I think I think coming in with a, we know that this is a problem. Mm-hmm. And what we are trying to do is look for um, a solution. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, this is your child's problem. And yeah. so putting that the onus there. So even though, even though it might be homework, the fact that your child doesn't get the homework done, you don't need to take the blame for that. Yeah. 
right? I'm not going to sit here and put that blame on you. Right. So don't sit there and put that blame on me that your yeah. child's not getting their home. Let's put the blame where it is. And so starting there, yeah. who is the person who is at fault and responsible? Yeah. Okay, this is where it is. So now let's go in and let's work on strategies because I fully accept and understand that there are things that you may not understand about uh, the way your child is spending their time and about technology. I can I can tell you um, a, a great example that I had in this, specific example. This was years ago. I had a parent who came in um, to my Bible class and, um, and again, this was at a different school, so I have no problem uh, sharing this. And said, I think you give way too much homework in your class. Mm-hmm. Now, man, you know me. Yeah. I, I probably give more work than you, uh-huh. but not by much. Right, right. Um, and so for somebody to come in and tell me that I'm giving way too much work in my classroom. Right. It's it's laughable. <laughs> well, you're probably, dude, thinking in connection to other teachers too. Correct. Like I know some of... The other teachers your yes. kids have. Yeah. And I find it hard to believe you're singling me out. But I assume, dude, if they're doing that to you, they've got to be saying it to the other teachers. I would, I would think so. But yeah, because I know you're not a big homework giver. Yeah. I mean, you give some. Yeah, yeah. probably a little more than I do. Uh, and I like to give somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, none. But right, going, yeah. right. And, and so yeah, it's one of those situations that, that very, like, instinctively, I wanted to laugh and be like, really? Really? Yeah. You're... <laughs> Yeah, um, but I appreciate you what you're saying. Like you said earlier, okay. Yeah, don't make a sarcastic comment. Right. Listen. Right. Right. And so instead of doing that, I I just I I pivoted. I said, okay, tell me tell me why you think that. Like like walk me through why yeah. why you believe that I'm giving too much homework. And, yeah. And so she did. You know, well, he's he's doing all of this. He's studying for this and 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 all this. And and you know, by the time he gets and he's taking your tests, he's just not doing very well. And so I, you know, okay. Um, can I ask you a question? How much time does he spend on um, his electronic device, video games, Facebook, computer, all of those things? Yeah. Oh, not 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 that much. Not that much. Okay. Can can I ask you to do me, do me a favor? Uh-huh. Can you take a week and just really intently watch his screen usage time? Yeah. Make it a priority for this week. Yeah. To watch his screen usage time. Yeah. When he says he's on his computer doing homework, just you know, have him have him do it in an open area yeah. and just see like how much time does he switch from doing that to jumping onto at the time Facebook. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, how much time does he spend, uh, going and getting a snack? Yeah. How much time does he spend on his phone? How much time does he spend doing these and just for a week? Yeah. And then we'll plan to meet same time next week right. and we can talk about all of these things right. and, and shoot, you know, very agreeable. Okay. You know, that comes back. I can't believe how much time he spends <laughs> not actually doing his work. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, oh, and yeah. so be, but but having that experience where the parent was willing to, the parent had a genuine concern. Yep. My child is struggling to to do the work, to complete the assignments, yeah. to do well. And and again, she she's coming in with an acu- with an accusation. You're giving too much work, but being able to take that and say, okay. Before we make an assessment on on the the level of work that's actually be, being given, can you do this for me? And the fact that she was willing and receptive to take the advice oh, that I had that's, given her yeah. and to actually look at that, we were then able to have a more realistic conversation about how we could best help her student. And ultimately, it. at the end of the day, it was, you know what, if you want to have your child hang around for an hour after school, I'm willing to have my room open so that he can come in and he can actually spend an hour focusing on X. Dude, I love it. No, no. I mean, it's, um, it's such a great story because what that parent's bringing, Mm -hmm. like you said, one, it's kind of a, just a continued application of the not making excuses. Yeah. And I'll, I'll comment on that too. Really quickly from the parenting side of things, 
I feel like one of the responsibilities parents have is to know their kids' shortcomings. Yeah. I've learned that none of my four are Jesus. Right. They need Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being a little sarcastic there. <laughs> but sometimes I know that if it, that defensive posture, yes, you know, Billy or Sarah, can, they can't do anything wrong, so it's got to be you. But just to say, look, you know, my kids are flawed. I see them every day. I know right. they're flaws. You're not going in trashing them as right. a parent. Sure. You're going to the teacher saying, fill me in. What's going on here? And you're, it, it's, a mu- it, it's a mutual conversation. Right. Have you had, Nathan, the parent that has kind of, quote, unquote, landed their punch in a healthy way where you're like, I could see that. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't factored that in. And you make an adjustment. Yeah, I um so I'm trying to I'm trying to think through um there there are several times where um parents have have come to me um in a posture of and and I think this is the posture of humility. Yeah. You have every right to give my child this grade. Yes. You have every right to do this. I recognize the authority that you have right. in this situation. Yeah. Would you please consider yeah extending some grace. Yep. We've had these circumstances yep. going on. We've had these things happening. And if you say no, we'll we're accept. fine. We'll accept it. I am 99.9% of the time likely and willing to extend the grace sure. in that situation yeah. than I am it at other times and in other ways. Yeah. If if a parent is coming to me and and first of all acknowledging and it's it's not a power trip. It's really not. It's just an acknowledgement that regardless of the decision that you make, you have the power to make this decision. And regardless of the decision that's made, yeah. we are going to accept it. Right. That's a sense of humility. That's a sense of we are not entitled to anything. We right. don't deserve anything. Right. I am more likely to extend that grace and mercy to that person in that case yeah. than not. So good for parents to hear, dude, because it, it 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 can be well the recognition, hey, you're coming into my realm here. Right. Um, and I think parents can sometimes overreach. I can see this in myself where I've overreached. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm the parent, therefore I know I'm in your sphere, but Right. And that's uh, something to always, I think, catch yourself in. Um, I'm going to transition, dude, to some of the bad stuff. Yeah. I'll tell you, I told you before we do it, dude. My quick story, having taught many years ago at the same school. Yes. Yep. Was a student I had. Yeah. I don't think is listening to this podcast, and it was 2004, Yeah, maybe. So I'm trusting the statute of limitations is well passed. Yeah. Um, I'm teaching a class. This student was always kind of just the the rebel and mm-hmm. understand. And I basically denied a request from him in the class, turned to start writing on the whiteboard, and he said, This is BS. But he didn't, he didn't say, say BS. BS. <laughs> he said it. And I mean that's a big deal. Yeah. Especially in a Christian school. And you could hear the collective <gasps> So I just uh, turned back and I said, okay, I need you to go to the office. And I sent them there at the time. And so they were doing it. And uh, then after class, I met, had a little talk with the admin and me and boom. So uh, reached out to mom and dad. Mom meets me Mm -hmm. with the student because that was wanted to discuss it together. And dude, I was shocked because... The first thing I'll call the kid's name, Joey. Yeah. It wasn't Joey, but uh, she said, oh, Mr. Dutcher, yeah, um, Joey and I have talked, and uh, he never said that. <laughs> so I kind of knew at the beginning, this is not this a This is going to be hard, yeah. He, he did say it. It's funny how that never came up in the conversation with the administrator right after class, that he never said it. Right. So at some point, this has gotten back. I never said it. It was somebody else, and I just said, oh, he did. And I remember thinking how there was nowhere to go from there, right? Um, because you you have a parent there, right, who has pre decided, yes, her kid is right, yeah, and is probably always right. And I remember thinking at the time I was what thirty three, thirty four, like I'm 
I'm an adult. Yeah. Talking to you about a kid. Yeah. Who's like 12 or 13. Can we have a conversation? Right. <laughs> uh, so that was my little story that I, I'll never forget. It was, and I can't even remember how it ended. It didn't end well. Right. Where do you go from there? Yeah. There is nowhere. I just, you either have to just go to war. Yeah. And have a awkward encounter with a parent with her kid there. Uh, I've probably shut it out of my brain. Dude, I imagine you've had a couple stories like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, my uh, first week that I was uh, officially in the classroom, Yeah, um, I had... I'd come in and uh, I I I admit I started uh, kind of hard and heavy uh-huh. as a teacher with an assignment. Yeah. Uh, now I was coming in uh, partway through the year. I was actually replacing a teacher. Yeah. Um, and so the students had been in uh, in school for about uh, roughly about two months at this point. Uh-huh. So I was coming in and I was, I, I had basically come up with this assignment. I was like, you know, I think, I think this will be a good assignment to kind of show the importance yeah. of what we're doing. I was teaching a science class, but yeah. it was, it was going to be a writing assignment. So I had, I had assigned a book for yeah. them to read. Um, and I said, I think this does a good job. It, it was a, it was a theological book actually mm-hmm. showing, um, the scientific method, but using a biblical premise yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, and so all of my science classes, I just said, we're going to do this. And, uh, I was teaching ninth through 12th grade at the point, at yeah. that point. And I said, really the, the assignment's going to be the same. The difference is going to be the level of detail in each paper and the length of each paper. Right. So the ninth graders, I think I had assigned like a one to two page paper. Tenth graders, I had assigned like a three to four page paper. Um, 11th grade was, you know, like four to five and then five to six for 12th grade. So just, you know, slight increase. But here, here's the assignment. This is what I want you to do and look for. Yeah. And I think I gave them like a month to read the book and do the assignment. Yeah. And, uh, and the book was not very long. Um, it was, you know, rather, rather short book. And uh, the time of the assignment date comes and goes and kids are turning it in and I'm working on grading it. And I had uh, one student in the ninth grade class, mm-hmm. one student who did not turn it in. Yeah. Um, and the mother wanted to meet with me. Yeah. But after her child did not turn the assignment in right. and discuss the assignment with me. Um, and so she came in and told me how ridiculous the assignment was. First of all, why are we talking Bible and science okay. in, a, in a Christian school? Why are we talking Bible and science? Oh, nee, that's right. Right. <laughs> sorry. Dude, that's, a, that's a, okay. All right. That's not what you would expect. All right. right. Um, and then she started listing every issue that was wrong with her child, including the fact that, uh, you know, uh, her, her child's father died when he was young. And so that has impacted his education and his learning. And he has all of these learning difficulties and issues and things like that. Right. Can I just say, for me personally, do not come in and tell me all the issues that your children have because I will throw mine right back in your face. Right. Yeah, my dad died when I was young too. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I I can relate to that. I can understand how difficult that is. But, you know, I, I had to get back up and, and do the things that were required of me because the reality is if I if I prolonged the work that needed to be done, I would have dug myself even deeper. So I still had to keep up with the work that was going on. And we're talking, we're talking this, this um, child's father had been in years at this point. It's not like it was that week that the father died. Yes. And, and you know, they're, they're going through the great, like, and I understand you don't just get over things like that, but, but you have to learn how to cope and move on. Then there was all the ADHD stuff. It's like, oh, really? Yeah, I, I was actually diagnosed with ADHD too. I can right. relate to that. I can understand how difficult that is to work through, but I had to do but it. You ha- yeah, I was going to say, they're um, striking out on many fronts with you. You know, and so so coming in in that posture, and, yeah. and again, instead of coming in and just saying, Mr. Bell, I'm sorry, I I've been struggling with this 
assignment with my son for for weeks and I just I haven't really known how to do this. I should have reached out to you sooner yeah. um, to express some of my concerns and to right. meet with you. It was immediately coming in. Why are you doing this? My son can't do this. I can't believe you're asking this. All of these things to excuse her child right. from work. Right. That blew me away. Yeah, yeah. Because I did not grow up in that environment. Again, my I grew up in probably another extreme where during the week of my father's death, I'm whatever time we're not at a service or meeting with people, right. my mom is having me go to my room to do work. Right, right. Um, because I'm basically going to be out of school for a week. Yeah. And when I go back, she does not want me to be behind because right. she knows that for me to try to get caught up, that the work can't be excused. Right. Right. And I think that's that's it. We live in a day where we just want to say, well, why why can't they just not do the work? I know. Um, this is really, wow, there's a lot I could say on this one, Nathan, but I'm, I think you said some really helpful things there for parents. So I'm wondering our parents listening, uh, this parent came in with an accusation. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a, again, sort of a pre-decided yeah. uh, posture, which, re, which really creates nowhere to go yeah other than a, a pretty unpleasant it's a power confrontation right um and you're right um coming in after the fact yeah coming in it probably doesn't help her case that every other student turned it in right because i would imagine nathan not knowing any of those kids if you surveyed all of their histories yeah there's probably some other maybe not have, have lost a parent but have had other uh traumas other yeah other adverse circumstances that, that's yep. usually the case in a fallen world. Um, but it immediately see what I always found troubling with that is I, I thought we were partners, right? For the benefit of, uh, benefit of your kid and your first meeting is kind of scorched earth. Yeah. Why would you do this? This is terrible. This is, uh, t- and, Again, uh, I think proactive communication, right. where maybe the mom reads the assignment. Oh, Mr. Bell, can I talk with you sometime? Yeah. And before it's due, mm-hmm. they're talking, they're sharing, they're asking questions. Uh, there is, and, and you know, I don't know how it works there uh, at your school, Nathan. I know in public schools you have to be mindful uh, of the. Um, of the IEPs, if a student has an IEP, right, right. there's some accommodations they, they can get. But usually, even those IEPs, though, I've yet to seen, I've yet to see an IEP, and I saw several when I did special ed in that mm-hmm. that uh, short-term alternate dimension reality I right. a couple years ago. Um, I, I've never seen an IEP that excuses work. Right. I've seen IEPs that bring maybe extension yep. of time. I've yep. seen IEPs that um, will build in accommodations yep. to have, a, a you know, audio tools, learning tools, other resources, et cetera, uh, n- not having a timed test. Yeah. There are accommodations that are given, which I would imagine, Nathan, you could do on a case-by-case basis. Oh, absolutely. You consult with your administrator, the yep. parent, et cetera. Yeah. But um, I've yet to see one. Yeah. Where the work is excused. Yeah. Dude, you just can't. Right. <laughs> you can't right. excuse the work. Right. You know, the the, I, the only times I can think of maybe an exception, a student's got a good track record. Maybe they, they had that rare accident. They're missing yeah. school for a month. And, okay, I don't need to worry about this, this, that. I right. just need the essay. Yes. The project. Right. And this. The, these two reading engagement assignments, were, I'm going right. to not count those. You, know, you, you can make that. Sure choice as an educator but But you're not excusing the essay yes the essay is the the piece that shows that they've they've worked through all this this is the assessment that you're giving the student yes um within this within this realm and sphere of of what's going on that okay they they get what is going on in this book they get what lessons i'm trying to teach them in this in this particular area and field. Yes. Right. Um, 
I mean, at the end of the day, if we were talking about like, I was having them do reading checks along the way. Yeah. Okay. We can excuse those reading checks. Right. Right. Um, you know, the reading checks are going to be helpful. So right. please don't misunderstand me. Yeah. I, I think you should do them yeah. because they're actually going to help you when it comes time to yeah. write the essay. But if, if that's what's weighing you down, right. we'll go ahead and we'll excuse those reading checks. Yeah, it's it's interesting, dude, because there's the, um, just the, 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 the e- even in the secular world, it's known, right? You catch more flies with honey. Yeah. So I think parents hearing this, it's good. If, if you're listening and you're a protective parent, which many of us are. Yeah, yeah. To realize I cannot control this right with my dying love for my child yeah my undying love for my child i'm gonna go in because that's what she's probably thinking it's my undying love for my child right i'm gonna control mr bell's entire educational approach yeah um and ooh, no right like you know you're like Man, please slow your roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's let's bring down the heat. Be kind. Rewind. Yes, exactly, dude. And I think that's 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 a key element. And it sounds to me, Nathan, because you're you're stricter than I am, which mm-hmm. I say to your credit, not mine. But I, it's why you're kind of fun to interview on this. You come in in a spirit of partnership, mm-hmm. reasonableness. You're, it, it's it's just easier to be reasonable because you have the same goal. Right. Right. It, to me, it's it's uh, the example I've drawn on the whiteboard before. You could use this for church uh, leadership teams, corporate teams, education, parents, teachers, in our case. Uh, I'll often like draw a squiggly line that represents a river, right? Yeah. Here's the river that we have to get across. And yeah. An X on top of it. That's a, That's the destination. And I draw stick figures below. That's us. Yeah. We all agree, right? So yeah. I'm all ears Yeah. when somebody among my peers says, hey, I think we should build a bridge. Yeah. I might say, yeah, I don't think we have the resources to build a bridge. Well, no, I think we do, Greg. If we, if we use this, if we could chop down these trees. Yeah, we'll have to sacrifice a couple of things, blah, blah, blah. We could do it. And then somebody else in the group says, no, I, I listen. If you come down the side of the river, I think we can swim across it. It's pretty shallow here. I think we can do it. Are you kidding me? That current is so strong, and you debate it. Yeah. But all that debate I welcome right? because you all want to get to the same place. Yes. When, when a in this case, if a parent comes in right. and they say, yeah, I don't want to go there. I want to go here. Right. Yeah, don't know what to do now. Right. Uh I, I'm all. I will entertain any discussion, debate. If it's, we all agree. What can we do? Yes. To help the student achieve the goal. So in that case, my thinking has been okay. Mr. Bell, uh, I didn't turn it in. Yeah. I should have come sooner. Yeah. Like I said so. I came later. I yeah. was busy. It caught my attention. Now, is there anything I can do? Am I able to help my student? And to what degree? Right. Um, is there uh, an accommodation that could be made? Yes. Because then you're like, it's taking your assignment. Like, you have a goal for them. Right. She's not saying, I don't care about the goal. Right. <laughs> if you say to right. a teacher, I don't care about the right. goal. Right. Right. I don't care about the learning objective. Yeah. You're kind of like, uh, okay. Right. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not really sure where, where to go from there. This is actually helpful, Nathan, because I can think of a few parent-teacher meetings I've had. Where again, I want to posture myself. I know my kid. This is really helpful. To yeah, I want to excuse. Yeah, not turning in work is not acceptable. Yeah, I want you to know t- we are in agreement on. Yeah, that. yeah. Because um, I because sometimes you're not sure. Right. Maybe they think it is acceptable because your right. assignment wasn't fair. So I told my kid they don't have to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I did, dude. And uh, when I was there at the school too, and I kind of wore an admin hat. Yep. The the strangest moment for me was when uh, I was there, I had three girls. They were like high school, sophomores, juniors Mm -hmm. that were given detention by one of their teachers for lunch. Yep. So I was in the library because they were painting or something in the offices. And uh, they were like, Mr. Dutcher, because, yeah, I'm going to be here. These girls have to have – I said, okay. And so they were there, and they weren't supposed to talk. And everything, and they didn't. So I'm kind of working on my stuff. Mm-hmm. And 
one of her one of the girl's parents came in and said, "Let's go," and looked at me and said, "I told her she's not serving this detention." <laughs> wow. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, at that point, I just said, "Okay," and you know, they took their their kid out, and I informed some of the other administrators what the situation was, and they handled it from there. Yeah, but that's an extreme example. Yeah, but um, just not the way we want to roll, right? As parents, yeah. And this is wisdom for Christian or not. Oh yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Well, and again, the reality is. It's understanding the sphere in which you are in charge. Yeah. Right? And the reality is, I'm not going to tell you what your children should or shouldn't be watching. Right. Right? That's a decision that you guys make at home. I I might have very strong opinions about it. Right. But I'm not going to tell you what they should or shouldn't be watching. Right. I'm not going to tell you where you should or shouldn't prioritize your spending on them. Right. Right. right? I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That's not my role. That's not my responsibility. I might have strong opinions on it, right? but I'm not going to do that. Right. So please don't come in and tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing in my classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I get you, you might be a teacher and you might have strong opinions on it, but guess what? I'm not going to come into your classroom and tell you what you should and shouldn't be doing with your students because I've had that over the years too where yeah. I've had parent teachers come in, well, I don't do this in my classroom. Yeah. And honestly, I just, I look at them and say, that, that's great. Yeah. I'm sure your students love it. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I do this in my classroom. Right, right. Yeah, you know? That's, dude, that's a good point. Parents who are teachers, yeah. it's sort of like the old adage, doctors make the worst patients. Yeah. You, know, you got to be really careful there because yeah. it's so hard not to superimpose right how you do it right uh, some parents could say well this is how i envision i would do it some parents or teachers said no this is how i do it yeah but even then even then yeah right I, and i'm going to respect your space your right. sphere your authority right in that role please do likewise to me one of the best statements that uh my wife joy and i still joke about is when i first came to redeemer um, because she's been there, like I said, she's been there for, she'll be, it'll be 16 years this year. She's starting her 16th year. Um, I'm starting my, uh, fourth year yeah. there. Um, when I first got there, I had, um, teaching a ninth grade class and later that day, student went home and talked to his parent uh, they knew that I was coming in to take over. They knew that I was, uh, you know, Mrs. Bell's husband, and uh, said, "So, what do you think of uh, what do you think of Mr. Bell as a teacher?" And in the comment, he's not Mrs. Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Joy and I fully acknowledge and admit we yep. have two very different styles. Yep. In the way we teach, we have very different um, philosophies yep. on on education i mean i wouldn't say different but, no, but we have but different ways in which we approach it yeah, we have different ways in which is, yeah i could see that just knowing you too yeah and your personalities you're, you're going to probably yeah make a different application absolutely yeah. and so to to think that even a husband and wife yeah. have different like you said applications yeah. when it comes to their classroom and how they're going to handle classroom and classroom structure and classroom management and discipline um then it would stand to reason that you who I'm not related to who I have spent almost no time with right. could have different approaches yeah, I, yes exactly um and and it's just respecting the fact that this is the way I have chosen to run my class right in my class I don't typically have to deal too much with classroom discipline right for one reason or another, either the students and I get along on a relational level right. and they have respect for me. And so we can kind of work through those things or the student is afraid enough of me that they're not going to mess <laughs> with me. Like, and again, it yeah. could be one or the other. Yeah. I do not struggle with having to establish my authority in the classroom. Right. It's, it's naturally there. Yeah. Um, Joy has to establish her authority in the classroom. Now she does, and she right. does it quick. Right. 
but she has to do that. Right. She has to let the students know. Now we can we can argue and debate whether it's because she's uh, a woman or or whatever it might be. Right. Sometimes you get that mom complex where dad comes in and there's no problem, there's no argument. Mom comes in and there's a lot of arguing that yeah. goes on. Right. We we can debate the reasons or whatever, but. But she has fully admitted that she has to establish that. Right. She has to come in and she has to do that where naturally I can come in and it's there. Yeah. And I do not have to work really at all to get that management in there. Yeah. And so you, you work through from, you know, what do I have to work on? What do I have to do? What do I have to establish? in my sphere in order to make this work, yeah. right? And so um, it, it just, we're individuals, yeah, right? Yeah. And so you need to decide, um, how am I going to do this? Yeah, of right? course. And I, you know what? That's good, Nathan. I, especially at the high school level, mm-hmm. elementary school, it's a little different because you get one teacher mm. for the year, yeah. High school people, yeah. parents of high school students, I think I've we've learned this from experience. You have to adapt. I feel it's my responsibility as a parent to tell my kids, learn your teacher's expectations yes. and meet them. Don't absolutize your favorite teacher and say every teacher needs to do it like that. Right. I say sometimes you don't know how a teacher tests until you fail the first quiz. Yeah. And fail it and know, oh, and yeah. that's what they're asking. Yes. I said that's a life skill. Yes. That you need to cultivate because it's going to be like this with Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let your children fail. Yes. Yes. Let them fail. That's part of how to learn. Yes. Yes. Uh, Let them fail so they know how to learn. Yes. Oh, Mr. Bell, he when he tests, he's going for this. Often another teacher that I know what I need to do to get an A. Oh, I can't do that and get an A here. I cannot tell you how many conversations I have to have with parents that points them to that truth. Yes. My child failed. Good. Yeah, they did. Yep. Okay. I'm I'm not concerned about it. Why are you? Right. I know. I know. As a teacher, I'm not worried about this one F because I I do get to know your children. Yeah. We do discuss these things as a group of teachers, right? I talk right. with the teachers who have had this child before and say, hey, can you let me know, like, is this is this typical behavior or right. atypical behavior for this particular student? Um, I'm just, I'm curious because, you know, they seem to bomb this first test, yeah. you know, and the teacher, well, no, it's, <laughs> it's really not... Um, <laughs> It's really not typical. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, well, now we'll sit down and talk about well, why did this happen? Why was this atypical? Uh, honestly, usually it still has to deal with it's the student's fault. Again, they weren't prepared for for me. Right. That's okay. That's fine. That's fine. This is not the end of the world. Your child failing, and then the more important piece of the failing is learning how to deal with the failing. Right is the best possible thing that can happen. Honestly, your child being cut from the sports team is one of the best possible things that can happen to your child so that you can help them to learn how to deal with the disappointment of being cut from the sports team, how to deal with the disappointment of failing a test. Because guess what? If it doesn't happen now and they don't learn to develop that skin for it, it is going to be much worse later. Yeah. Right? Yep. Well, dude, I, I saw the special on uh, U.S. presidents recently, and they got to W, George W. Bush. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember the guy's name. He was like the assistant chief of staff. Michael Card was the chief of staff. It was, uh, it's going to drive me nuts. But it was interesting. He said he had worked for CEOs and several before, and he was very used to giving reports. He was an organized guy. Yeah. So he had a meeting with Bush once a week, whatever his task was. And he said the first time he comes in and he's so proud of himself, he's got his report, it's beautifully typed, he's got charts and graphs, and he expects to hand his copy to Bush. Yeah. And the way Bush wanted his report, uh, I want give me give me the three takeaways I need from this document. Yeah. And he wasn't prepared. Yeah. And it kind of surprised me. He said, I, nobody had ever asked me that. So yeah. he stumbled and fumbled, and Bush told him, yeah, don't, don't do this again. Yeah. So- Think about it. that's a life example. Yeah, but no, every other CEO loved these reports. Right, it doesn't matter. Right, the the guy you're working for now, he wants it like this. Yes. So he said, "What what was I going to do? I adapted." 
Yeah. So I would have the report. He said occasionally he would take one. Yeah. But he said the three things, Mr. President, boom, boom, boom. And he said, thank you. Yep. Anyway, I'm saying yeah. that's life. Yeah. And part of our job as parents and as teachers, right? Yeah. Prepare the kids for life. So I love the idea of I've always told our kids that Lisa and I both, yep, yep, you I know it's not the teacher that you would prefer. You don't like it. Right. But get that's you're going to have bosses like this. Yes. You're 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 yes. going to have business partners like this, yes. neighbors like this that you you've got to learn right. and adapt. And if we just constantly come in as parents and rescue, 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 right. rescue. Friend of mine, dude, who was a, uh, I've had a lot of guidance counselor friends uh, through the years. A lot of them have been here at the church. Yep. But uh, he said, yeah, you know, obviously there's the helicopter parent. Yes. And he goes, you know what we call the extreme helicopter Blackhawk. Yeah. And he said, <laughs> yeah. they would claim, oh, there's a Blackhawk parent coming. Uh, They're going to come down and it's going to be ugly here. Yeah. Um, well, and can I say too that from the perspective of the teacher, guess what? I do not want your child to fail either. Yeah. Like I, I, I also do not want your child to fail. Yeah. That, that is a reality. Right. I want to see your child succeed, but I also am looking at, again, I am in education. This is my profession. Right. This is what I do. Yeah. I understand where they are and where they need to be, right. not just when they graduate middle school, not just when they graduate high school, when they're in college and when they graduate from college, I understand the workforce and what they're going to need to learn. And so there are times where I need to step back and I, I have to evaluate students on an individual basis. Yes, on an individual basis. And I have to say... I'm going to give this student this hint right. that's going to help them here. Yeah. I'm not going to do that for this student. Right. Because there's there's a deficiency in this student and yeah. they need this lesson. Yeah. Right. This student who puts their heart and energy and effort into everything that they're doing they have some serious learning challenges and difficulties. Right. And so I know that giving the student this hint right. is going to help boost them to some confidence Absolutely. that they need to continue to progress. This student, this one has a little too much confidence. This student needs to struggle with this right. because they need to understand the value of working for this piece of information. Yeah. Like, Isn't that what we're trying to do? Yeah. Is that what we're trying to produce? Yeah. Um, of course. And so I do, I, you know, I, I really, uh, this has been great. I mean, oh, I could go on for no, I've loved hours. It, I feel like I'm, uh, you're answering all of my insider info on the old uh, parent-teacher meetings and getting a glimpse of, I think, just, just I, I hope, what good time of year, too, to drop it. Yeah, oh, yeah. School the is School starting. is in session, yeah. So maybe parents hear this and, and get a little perspective of an experienced teacher. Yeah. Enjoyed it, maybe. This has been a blast. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do a part uh, part two of our part two yes, sometime dude, later. Absolutely, it's always going to be relevant. All right, my friend. Until the next time, we just rock the Casbah. Thank you again for listening to these. Go to eleven an unchurchy conversation about everyday faith. Once again, please make sure you like, subscribe, and review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you ever find yourself in the Forest Hill, Maryland area, please feel free to stop by at 135 Industry Lane, and you can get all of our service times and information at ChristFC.org. These go to 11.